Today, we talk about... Presto Abracadabra! <laughs> Yo, Kyle, son, dude! You back? All right. Let's get it going. Okay, let's get it going. Yeah, let's talk about the Presto real quick. So, again, unbox these in a previous video. Click it to click. Uh, let's just get moving with this. So you got, again, the upside down, inside out box, the off-white paper. Open this up and then, of course, you got this lovely, lovely shoe, which we talked about briefly, plus all the laces. I think it's a fact that I got to switch out into purple, or well, purple. <laughs> uh, purple drink. I want that purple stuff. Orange and green just got to do it. It just fit so well on the shoe. So that's a fact. But I just wanted to bring this back to see, you know, how we got here and how this qualifies for shoe of the year, as many are noting. And, you know, well deservedly so. Uh, for this, again, I think uh, I'm so torn still on whether I want to keep the hang tag on this one or not. The Jordan one, absolutely a hundred. We'll definitely keep the hang tag on. This one, I'm not so sure yet. I may just have to try it on feet both ways. I think if I wear it to work, which I definitely will, uh, I gotta take the hang tag off. But if I'm wearing it casually, I'll keep the hang tag on. But I feel like I'm not gonna be switching it in, in and out, so maybe I'll just take it off. We'll see. Maybe I'll just talk myself out of it. Ah. <laughs> He's already dead. Cool. Now. Some other things. I love this kind of scotch tape aged masking tape type look in the back. I think that's super, super dope. Uh, love the little glistening swooshity swoosh. And then from what I had read and, and heard from Virgil himself, he had basically taken an Air Max 90 inside, uh, the innards of it, and flipped it out inside out. And that's what he used to make the material for the, uh, for the upper here. So that's lovely. And then under this tongue is like an actual Presto tongue. But then you got this big, fat, juicy tongue over the top. Pause. You know what a pause is? Yes. Pause not. Now you kind of add some extra cushioning. So that's pretty dope. Then you got, obviously, the uh, the shoelace markings, which you can kind of make out there uh, with the uh, quotations. And then, of course, his patented arrow pattern, which I made a separate video about uh, trying to figure out what exactly Virgil's um, underlying theme with those arrows is, but you know, it e would it e. Now, let's bring it back to see how we got here, if you will. I recall when the original Prestos came out, it was, uh, you know, touted as this uh, t-shirt for your feet, so to speak. And it was supposed to be super comfortable, slip on, slip off, the perfect airport shoe, day, do, day, do, day, whatever. Now, you know, I think it kind of just faded in and out from those early 2000s when it originally debuted. But I think the re-release in the age of flying it is when the Presto started to shine, and we've seen that in future iterations, which we'll get into very briefly. So my first experience with the Prestos came when they introduced the Ultra Flying It version. It came in this lovely standard Nike box. Then you get the Flying It construction with the more of the mid-cut, which to me personally, compared to the OGs that released in the early 2000s, to me, this silhouette simply looks marvelous. Way better. You get the flying it construction, which I completely prefer to the uh, original build of uh, what they were using on the uppers. And again, the swoosh, uh, mine have become a little, little pretty, pretty dirty, because I've been wearing these. Super comfortable, like super comfortable. Then they hit you with the bop, little orange hit on the bottom with the swoosh. Uh, Nike Air on the back. ba dum ba <laughs> Um, but yeah, I thought this updated model was when the Presto shined because you got to highlight the silhouette for what it truly should have been, which was this futuristic shoe of the new millennium. And I think they just weren't quite there yet with the original model, but this kind of solidified it. And then of course, what happens next? Well, let's fast forward to 2016. And by many accounts, the shoe of the year came in this very box right here. And a collaboration with Acronym presented us with... <laughs> Acronym Presto collaboration, touted by many as the shoe of the year last year. And, um, you know, obviously a lot of people preferred the bamboo colorway. Or I'm sorry, not the bamboo colorway, the, um, the olive colorway. Uh, although the bamboo was also nice and clean, but a lot of people preferred the olive, which I gotta say, it's a solid shoe, but I have so many olive shoes and so many other shoes that sort of reminded me of that. 
and and I'm in general a bigger fan of shoes that pop, you know, hit you with the pop. So I went with this, the Hot Lava colorway, which to me just looked absolutely stunning. You get that beautiful Presto aesthetic cue from this, uh, you know, the, the wraparound laces, but here it looks much more futuristic, much more menacing, uh, if I can call it that. Then you get the hits of the Volt and the Hot Lava, which I believe there's not a lot of information on, but I believe some had suggested that the cues came from a tribute to Nike's, you know, typical use of Volt on a lot of their models as a key design color as well as the um, uh, the infrared kind of giving homage to the Air Max 90 OG colorway of infrared, which one of the best looking shoes of all time, let's, let's be honest. Now, the other thing they did was they kept that sort of mid-cut design, although this seems to me like a little bit taller. Uh, let's take a quick look here. Uh, yeah, a little bit taller, a little bit taller, not by much. But then Aerosen, the, uh, the key designer from the acronym brand, hit you with this lovely high quality leather backing, the Zippeth and then the, uh, the button in the back. So pop, can zipper it up, get you a tight feel. Get you somebody that can do both. Don't know why I went there, but I did, bruh. Then you get the Presto written on the side and it's just a pop, pop, pop. Beautiful shoe, beautiful shoe. And you know, well-deserving uh, shoe of the year last year and, I, and I've enjoyed wearing it. Super comfortable, super um, you know, futuristic looking and it totally fits with um, with Acronym's design aesthetic, where they, they really specialize in these very high-end, uh, futuristic, high-tech gear uh, apparel that can function as essentially like military SWAT team secret agent clothing with like 80,000 zippers and buttons and hidden uh, tabs and blah, 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 blah. So not really my preference as far as something I would wear, uh, but it, the, the look of it is super, super dupe. Super dupe. The design is super, super modern, clean, chic, a very intimidating design, which I mean in a good way. And it totally fits with the inner clock workings of, of Aerosen. Seeing the way he designs things and the way he approaches things, it, it made total sense from a collaborative standpoint with uh, Nike that he would approach it this way. And then of course, seeing my boy, John Mayer, shout out these shoes and, and actually wearing these shoes. I saw him with these and also the olives, uh, you know, that, that also gave me some confidence to say, you know what, I'm gonna pull the trigger on these. And I'm glad I did because by the time I did, it was then declared the shoe of the year, prices skyrocketed. And uh, even though I had to still pay resell, I think I paid half of what you know people have to pay now if they want this. And I think prices are still rising on this. So uh, glad to have it, but hey, guess what happened next? Virgil hit us with the bop. So, you know, just continuing that theme, he kind of took it a whole different direction where he took more of that minimalistic, uh, deconstructive approach, inside out approach, um, you know, uh, looks undone, looks like a work in progress approach, but it just works because if you understand where he's coming from, which again, if you haven't seen my uh, review video on the entire design inspiration of Off-White and Virgil's influences and in how he does his work, it makes total sense that this is what he would come up with. And I think that's why it speaks to so many people and they consider this such a powerful shoe. Um, and then given the context of the Presto and how, personally, I just feel like when it came around in the early 2000s, it was just way too ahead of its time for that futuristic look they were trying to go for. And now, as we head towards two decades later, towards 2020, this seems more in line, along with this, of what uh, you know Nike was hoping for when they released that shoe. You know, I think this is just what future footwear looks like, lends itself to flying it. Uh, you know, so you know when you when you pull out all three of these and look at them side by side. You know, they, they all in their own right look super duper. And I'm just picturing if there was an alternative universe where you could walk into a Foot Locker and see all three of these sitting there and had no idea about the design, just some mom and pop shop where uh, a kid comes in or, or a parent is looking for a, a new pair of shoes for their, for their child and they see these three pairs sitting side by side. I really think, you know, without knowing the background behind them or how limited they are or whatever, I really think you could make a case that all three colorways would find an audience. Um, for whatever you're looking for. You know, you get that high-tech, intimidating look of this, you get the sleek yet distinctive look of the uh, GR, and then you get this deconstructed, uh, simplistic look that's more of your hipster vibe, I wanna say. Not really, but you know, it ain't what it is. But with that said, you know, I'm, I'm just uh, happy where we are with these Prestos. You know, you got the shoe of the year last year, you got arguably the shoe of the year this year. I mean, I, I don't think it's any coincidence that it's, you know, Prestos in the discussion. I think they just lend themselves to collaborations very well because they can be played with so many different ways. I mean, you see how different these two shoes are, yet they speak out to a lot of people with passion for sneakers and, and how beautiful you can 
create something out of the same basic baseline. So uh, with that said, you know, I'm, I'm happy to, to be able to own both and wear both. Really excited to switch out the laces and have some fun with that. And uh, yeah, that's all I got for you. So with that said, uh, we'll see you on the next one. We out. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.